Gal show is ghetto. Allegedly. Check on your people show. Today we have special guest Miss Sashka Boshan. Hey. Sashka. How you doing? <laughs> I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Thank you so much for having me. And it's a pleasure to have you. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, Miss Sashka. Mm -hmm. Can you can you take us back to when your childhood? Oh, my childhood. Uh well. <laughs> so I was raised here in Baton Rouge. Um, I went to multiple elementary schools because my, my parents moved move, so move. many times. I'm from everywhere. I'm a grasshopper. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was always the new student um, at school. Um, I went to uh, UT. I went to, uh, to Mayfair. I went yeah. to Mayfair. Yes, yeah, so I went to UT and I went to Mayfair. And then I went to Glasgow and then Shearwood <laughs> uh, Middle School and then uh, Baton Rouge High, then Tara. And then I finally graduated from Family Christian Academy. Now you see, you see all that, huh? Yeah. See, I had all that, 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 and then, you know, yeah. uh, a, a little Usa. sign of relief yeah. uh, towards the <laughs> end. So, but the thing about it, like all of that helped to mold who I am yes. to where I'm not so far removed from, you know, my people. I, I grew up initially, my parents moved to the South. So they moved to South Baton Rouge. That's where I'm from. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then they just kept, you know, moving a little <laughs> further, you know, further away. <laughs> further away, you know, just uh, just. But no matter to, where you go, you learn something from wherever you go. Exactly. So whether it's good or bad. Exactly. You so exactly. Maybe it ain't too and so, I mean, and then also, you know, you build those uh, relationships that you may have to come back to, yes. um, you know, in years to come. Like, yeah, I grew up with you. Remember we went to school yes. together? So it's one of your schools that you went to. I but... told you you was going to be a radio. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And so I definitely, uh, you know, would, would see people from, you know, the past and things like that when I did uh, start on radio. So Ms. Saskia, how was how was life for you growing up in Baton Rouge? Uh, life Besides for me, <laughs> <laughs> life for me growing up in Baton Rouge, uh, it was not easy. Um, so I, you know, I thought that uh, growing up without electricity and and water and things like that was a thing. I thought, you know, having your cars repossessed, having you know just uh hand-me-downs um you know getting food Eating boxes yes getting food <laughs> well tomato and, and mayo sandwiches oh. <laughs> uh and and frying bologna you know and so you know i thought that you know getting food boxes um you know was a th it was it was normal for for me and my family mm -hmm. however i knew somewhere deep down inside that there was Greater. yeah there, there was just something something more and and I knew that that wasn't for me when I get older however this is going to help me as I get older so to where to appreciate what to I, yeah. exactly to appreciate um, what it is that I went through and also go back and help others yep I read at like 19 years old, you started radio all while in college. What made you choose radio? I know they say you were shy. So, mm -hmm. um. so radio chose me. <laughs> <laughs> so, I um, so I came back, I went to school in Virginia for a little bit and I came back because I had surgery and uh, my mom was like, you just not gonna sit on this couch. Like you got to do something. To do something. So I went through a temp agency and so they had me at the casino, uh, being a hostess uh, at down down at the casino. And uh, I would love when people would win because they'll give us like them hundred dollar tips. <laughs> and so um, they said, well, you know, you're doing well here, you know, at the casino. We got something else for you at the radio station. So immediately, I thought it was me sitting behind a mic. And I'm like, oh, I can't wait. However, it wasn't that. I sat behind a stack of paperwork. 
and uh, working in the traffic department, which now um, I know that it's a term for commercials, doing, you know, mm -hmm. making sure and checking off commercials. That's how the bills were paid. Yes. And uh, they had me set up right next to the president and CEO um, of the radio station at the time, right next to his office. So I would see all my, the people that I listened to on the air, I'm like, oh, that's such and such. Oh, that's that's Juice Man. Oh, that's Cat Daddy. Oh, that's such. so you know. And I'll see all of them uh, walk down the hallway. Oh, this guy Brody, this Robbo, and uh, just started kind of getting there a little earlier and going uh, to the booths and just waving. Eventually, Guy Brody was like, come on in here, and. Uh, I would kind of be that morning voice because it was Katera. Katera uh, Williams uh, was on their morning show as well. She was a student at the time at Southern University, but now she is running, running everything. She is doing it, so uh, that's awesome. And so um, I would go in and just kind of speak or whatnot, and it just became a routine that, you know, hey, come say something on the radio, hey, and they started – Ask me where I was from and, you know, this, that, and the other. And then the name Island Princess uh, came up because I am from uh, Trinidad. You could come so. to <laughs> So I'm from the Caribbean. But um, so, you know, it just kind of started that way. And then my temp time was up um, with the, with, at the time with the radio station through the temp agency. And um, there was a um, business manager that spoke up for me and asked um, – if I wanted to be on the radio, and she kind of spoke to the CEO, the president, and he said, well, give her a chance. And mm -hmm. they talked to the program director, and he gave me uh, an overnight spot, because that was, you know, for people who, <laughs> like myself, didn't go, to school for, yeah. didn't go to school for radio, didn't know anything except for when I went into the morning show. Um, so I uh, ended up getting fired because I was singing through music because I thought that's what you do I mean that's what they did on the morning show wow. and uh he's like you know you better get out mm -mm, get your stuff get out um I went back the next day and I told him well you know I appreciate you um giving me the opportunity but I didn't know anything yes. you know and I do apologize if I did you know that wrong he said and I got up he was like wait he said I appreciate you for, you know, for coming in and, and saying that and, you know, just pretty much not cussing him out, yeah. <laughs> but being respectful yeah. of that opportunity. And so he said, you know, how bad do you want it? And he said, well, I want you to do this uh, every day, every night. You get in that studio, you practice, uh, you know, talking and you read billboards and do this. And so he was giving me um, certain things, but not so much because no one pretty much like said, let me take your hand and show yeah. you. Um, you know, it was like I had to get books on my own. My dad was like, you gotta read, you gotta read. So I got books on how to, to talk to people, books on how to be a comedian. <laughs> I'm, yes. I'm natural for me. Like, I, mm -hmm. I'll say something and don't attend for it to be funny, mm -hmm. but it'll actually turn out very funny, like dead. Yeah, so, but I, I got those books not knowing that I was going to be on a morning show to where I would have to use those particular skills and things like that. And, um, and you know, he didn't give me a compliment. Uh, he did, he ended up leaving. And one day I was on air and he called me and he said that, uh, you know what? He said, I'm so proud of you. He said, you are one of the best sounds there is in Baton Rouge. And so for him to, and he's a legend, like he is, he's a legend uh, program director before um, the program director that I had um, at the time. But he, you know, he gave me that compliment, like I, I shed a tear and, you know, it just let me know that I was on the right path. Yes. And um, I would always pray that my voice can be an anointing to those who, who listen and to those who hear. And so it's an anointing right now. Oh. It's so right. <laughs> and then I well, had to do a skin check. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> yes. oh, well, thank you. But, you know, I just I just love talking and I love teaching um, because no one taught me. 
And I was like, I'm not gonna let that happen to anyone else. And I you know? was learning too. I, this is what I wanna do so badly. Well, I'm here to help. <laughs> and I mean that. <laughs> so moving on, mm -hmm. can you, I heard you mention that you teach. Mm -hmm. So can you tell me where you taught and who? So I've had the opportunity um, to not only uh, teach your uh, producer, director, <laughs> Johnny Domino, oh, wow. <laughs> but uh, I've also had the opportunity to work with Big Buddy and uh, teach uh, in school and summer uh, radio broadcasting I just couldn't wait to get to Big Buddy with a snack. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yep, for the snacks, and I make sure I bring snacks for my radio broadcasting class too. So just you know, being able to, like I said, go back and 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 teach uh, what I learned uh, from some greats and what I've learned on my own uh, to be able to uh, help the next generation. You know, I'm I'm all about it. Now, since you said radio broadcasting mm -hmm. class, let's get a successful voice. Oh, okay. what do you offer for those who are stepping out into the movie podcast, podcast and radio mm -hmm. world? So Sashka's voice dot com. <laughs> so we do a uh, voiceover work for radio, television, um, ebooks. Um, we can do imaging for your radio station, for your television station and for your podcast. Um, and um, I, you know, I, I, I produce um, the the imaging so I can do the graphics uh, or I can just send uh, my voice and you can yeah. put the graphics and put everything uh, together so um, that's what we offer and we also offer uh, hosting so I, I host uh, events uh, Essence Music Festival has been okay all right all right so yeah so I I, I host uh, many things and so you can definitely uh, reach me through sashkasvoice.com so my next question is how did it feel to like be the voice of MTV to the essence face movies like etc how did it feel to be on such big platforms here you it, it was it was a great feeling because um I've always talked about it when I was, you know, younger. I mean, the television raised me, so MTV uh, had to get home and watch the, you know, the, the videos that were coming out on BET. And so um, I love what uh, Ananda Lewis. Uh, she was somebody that I watched, and I loved. And she kind of just remind. She was brown skin, you yeah. know. She just yeah. remind me of me yeah. seeing somebody that looked like me on television. Yeah. I'm like, well, I can do that. Yeah. And so. Um, I just loved her and what she did, and I'm like, I could do that. And so I came home one day um, after getting off the air on the radio and just plopped down on my mom's couch, and uh, I get a phone call, and uh, the guy was saying he was from BET, and you know, I'm like, mm-hmm, I'm like, mm-hmm, playing on my time. Yeah, <laughs> and so he said that, um, you know, we are looking for the next host for 106 and Park, and I'm like. Well, Free and AJ did leave or announced that they were leaving. Mm -hmm. So, you know, maybe it's true. He said, well, thing about it, I need you out here next week, like the following week. And so, um, you know, everything is not what, you know, glamorous and everything like that on the radio. <laughs> you know, what it, you know, I had to try to put together, rub together two coins <laughs> to get me a, 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 a flight, <laughs> yeah, a plane ticket. Thanks to my husband now. <laughs> <laughs> Dustin stepped up. I was like, I guess you're going to be my wife one day. Let me go ahead and help out. But, um, we so. See we talk about. <laughs> so. Um, I went out there and the experience was so amazing um, to be able to um, be in the room with, you know, people who they considered great. Because I asked the guy, I said, how did you find me? He said, oh, we know how to find good talent yes. when we need it. And that's something that I teach uh, the kids in my organization. That's something, you know, I just let people know, like, stay ready. Yes stay ready and so me plopping down on the couch um was not me staying ready <laughs> um yeah my my talent was, you was in me ready, but... <laughs> my talent was in me but if i was ready ready you know things may be different you know i maybe i would have took uh, 
Roxy and Terrence J's, <laughs> you know, Roxy's position, I should say, but that's who ends up getting it. But just knowing that, um, you know, I had that opportunity that they called me out there was a, truly a, a blessing for me. And so it was another check that I was able to check off because they had us going all around town in DC, uh, introducing videos, you know, like what we would do if we were on 106 and Park. And so it was, it was really fun. And then MTV um, <clears throat> was another contest that they had with like hundreds of people over at, at LSU. And um, I was like, let me just go try out oh. and see. <laughs> and I ended up winning uh, the contest and, um, had the opportunity to, to uh, be on MTV2 and, and introduce um, certain, you know, videos or talk about uh, what it is that they had to offer at the time. Um, they flew me out. I was in a Kanye West um, music video, the his college dropout album, it's on MTV2. So that was pretty cool, um, and it was just just some really, you know, good things. I've I've you know went out to the BET Awards and. Um, I mean, it's just from where <clears throat> my life was um, to the things I've experienced and to where I am now, you know, I'm just really grateful and just being able to um, help the youth and, and talk to them about the entertainment industry and how if you're not ready for it, it will eat you alive. I was so, told. Mm -hmm. So can you tell me a little about you and Johnny Domino at 94.9, the power station? Mm -hmm. So yeah, so um, the opportunity came for, um, for myself and my other radio colleagues uh, to be at um, a radio station that was um, here in Baton Rouge, 94.9, and uh, we had to look for other on-air talent. Yes. And for some reason, we chose Johnny Domino <laughs> <laughs> to uh, to be, you know, one of our on-air personalities because, I mean, I've, man, throughout the, my radio career, like, he would come to events and he would just be the same person that, that like, you see here, yeah. like, it, you know, and just have me cracking up. Uh, before we got on the, you know, on the air and things like that. And so um, <clears throat> just bringing that personality over and, um, he, I mean, he's just an overall good dude. And so bringing that personality over and he was humble and teachable. So, you know, that also, you know, made him easy to work with. Uh, you know, when somebody is humble and, and teachable and just wanting to, to learn, mm -hmm. um, you know, so it was really fun. Um, it was a really fun time, you know, that we had, and uh, then I had another baby, and so <laughs> after that, <laughs> they they kind of held it down. But uh, you know, it's yeah, it's, dang, it's been it's been some years. <laughs> I remember when he had braids, <laughs> when he had cornrows going on to the back, long ones too. But yeah, so um, it was it was definitely great uh, working with him, and then to see you know, where he is now and the things that, that he's doing. And now it's like full circle, you know, now I'm, I'm on his show. So, uh, I mean, that's just the way, you know, things are like, um, especially in the entertainment industry. So you never know uh, who, cause you, the next CEO, you know, you can be sitting across the next CEO. And so, you know, it's just, that's just how the entertainment industry is. And that's life. Mm -hmm. I'm just kidding. I thought you was gonna say you better open your mouth when you speak. Oh, oh! <laughs> but can you tell me about that too? Like, why, how you came up with it? So, uh, the open your mouth when you speak um, is just a part of my articulation teaching um, that I do with all my students, with everyone, with my children, and you know, instead of mumbling, like you want people to be able to hear. Yes. Um, like I told my students just a couple weeks ago, um, when you say your name, like your name is everything. Yes. Like your name, you should command that room when you say your name. So when I go to conferences out in Washington, D.C., and they're going around the room, and I'm sitting there like, oh, I can't wait till they call my name. 
So I stand up and I'm like, I'm Sashka Bonchon from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Like, get it right. Like, you're going to hear everything. Every so, you, yes, every letter. So that's where open, you know, your mouth when you speak uh, comes from. And I just, you want to be able to loosen your jaw. So open your mouth when you speak. And just enunciate. You should be able to hear that K. Um, at the end, so that's just the. I just heard it speak. <laughs> <laughs> that's the articulation exercise that I do, and I enjoy teaching it. That's something all my students remember, and even my kids. So they they clown me about that, but yeah, open your mouth when you speak, so that way you know your th when you're saying mouth as well. So I love it. So what made you want to jump from? The radio, being a radio person to uh, HIV activist. Um, so again, um, you know, radio found me, mm -hmm. and HIV activism did as well. Um, and you know, um, I initially started teaching, um, facilitating in prisons, um, the Women's Correctional Center um, in Saint Gabriel and EBR. And so um, being able to go in and teach our sisters and educate them on HIV, um, AIDS awareness, um, STDs, and having conversations with them um, and not knowing that some of them were HIV positive and seeing how they interacted with my co-facilitator um, because she was not new to that. I was new to it, so mm -hmm. I was pretty much in there kind of watching her. Learning too. Mm -hmm, and, and learning, and so, um, you know, continuously going in there, and before we went in, we would have to prepare. So just doing research um, on what it is that we're gonna teach because we wanna be comfortable with what we teach. We wanna know for ourselves too and so um you know seeing how um they were living living with hiv and seeing how um they weren't down um about it um seeing how they knew that um you know if they take their medication um that they can, can live a long healthy life and so um after doing um Facilitating in prisons, um, I started with the OMG conference. And I said, you know, I wanted to educate youth, you know, about this. And what better way than to use my platform um, in radio and entertainment and mix the two? Um, because nobody just don't want to sit and talk about HIV, <clears throat> STDs, or um, anything that they may think is boring, especially young people. So um, I, I had, um, what's her name? I had the artist from New Orleans come out along with the DJ from New Orleans. I cannot think of their name. Uh, no, she was Hart, Courtney Hart. <clears throat> oh, okay. And Courtney Hart uh, came out and then uh, the DJ from New Orleans. So they were my first like entertainment um, people that, that agreed to come out yeah. and uh, the kids enjoyed it and so they uh, they wanted more and uh, I began you know OMG that way however we started another conference in at Southern University in Baton Rouge so our first one was in Ponchatoula and then um, the one in Baton Rouge I needed sponsorship money and so um, my parents had just moved to, uh, <laughs> to they still moving. <laughs> they just moved to um, a new neighborhood, and the people came in to welcome them. And um, you know, my mom, she's like, "Oh, my daughter, she she um, she talk about AIDS, and she Lala, <laughs> and she's having a conference, and blah. and so the lady was like, "Well, I work at St. Elizabeth or whatnot, but here's some information." And at the end, it, she gave me all the names of um, different um, community organizations in Baton Rouge um, who focus on HIV and AIDS. And at the end was the AIDS Healthcare Foundation. And so, you know, I was like, well, I heard about these kind of sort of, but I never heard about this one. 
So of course I went to the bottom of the list. I was like, let me call them and ask them for some money. And so um, I looked and looked and looked for a local number. And um, the number that I found was my coworker. Well, he's my coworker <laughs> now, but, um, and he wasn't local. Um, actually, he, he did work this particular area. And um, he, you know, said, hey, yeah, we'll, you know, we'll look into it and we'll come, can we come down? I was like, okay, like, I guess y'all can come in. Yeah. We, he said, yeah, let's meet for lunch. And he said, bring some people with you too. So that let me know like, okay, he's not crazy. He's not trying to kidnap me and, you know, all this other stuff. So we met up and, and I was like, I'm, all this just because I'm asking for some sponsorship <laughs> money for my OMG conference. And, um, and so he said, yeah, you know, we'll, um, we'll go ahead and support, you know, your conference. And he, um, he said, you know, we did our research and we like, you know, what it is that, that you're doing. Would you like to work for us? And I'm like, I'm just asking for money. I wasn't coming asking for a job, <laughs> but I'm like, okay, okay I'll, I'll work it. it. Yeah, I said, I'll, I'll do it. And, um, and so, you know, they told me that, um, you know, we got your back with whatever it is. Like, you can be who you are. Be yourself. Um, be creative um, in bringing awareness to HIV and AIDS. And, and so when I heard that, like, okay, I'm not inside of a box because I don't, being right. a creative, you don't like to be, and, and Johnny should know this, too. You don't like to be trapped inside of, like, right. you, when you you're creative. Free, yes, right. you want to be able to do what Expand you. Expand your mind. Yes. <laughs> And so, um, and so I was like, yes. And uh, I've been with them for going on nine years now. And, um, you know, I've done everything from sitting at the table with um, international advocates from Uganda, from China, and giving them um, my take. They asked me, it was only two of us from the United States and me from Baton Rouge, Louisiana, yeah. and it was another coworker of mine from North Carolina, the only ones, the only two from the U.S. to sit around that table and to um, share best practices um, with our um, colleagues from those particular countries. And so, for them to be able to, you know, choose me to to do that was a great opportunity and let me know that what I was doing in educating and um, you know, bringing people to, to get tested and, and treatment for HIV and AIDS was, was, yeah, was, was on point. And using that platform from radio broadcasting was on point. And it just gave me the confidence to where, you know, let people know that you can talk, you can say the word HIV and AIDS. You can, yes. you know, of course there's stigma behind it because people started looking at me like, you working for AIDS organization? And you, that's a generation. You, uh, that's just, uh, yeah, okay. I'm like, you know, just you don't have to have HIV and AIDS to talk about HIV and AIDS. Uh, so, you know, just kind of clearing uh, that stigma, you know, and, and pulling that away and letting people know that you can live a healthy life. Um, it's not the end, although some people feel like it is the end. And, um, you know, there is treatment and you can go get tested at the AIDS Healthcare Foundation. We have two locations. Uh, in Baton Rouge, one on Blue Bonnet and one on Goodwood Boulevard. Um, so just look it up, AHF, AIDS Healthcare Foundation. And AHF is also um, an organization that gives back. So if there are programs or programming um, around HIV and AIDS, um, AIDS Healthcare Foundation will definitely support uh, that. And I am the person to talk to about the support <laughs> so you know and and just being able to to do that is it's been a blessing and they are um i am standing on the shoulders of giants um and working for a global aids organization and did people come to me and, and say how how did you get that or how you know how you end up yes people did because you know yeah they have degrees and, and what are the, like, they the had, misconceptions like Mm -hmm. people just thinking you have it because you speak yep yep that's wow. that's the that's actually the biggest and I get it from students uh a lot which is I'm fine answering the right, question that's going to be a question yeah that's coming with this, yeah you know? and and with young people you know they bowl like it's what made you, do that? you got it you got it <laughs> yeah you got it you this you that 
So, you know, you know, no, I don't. However, um, it's, you know, it's not nothing that I, don't, I really don't have to tell anyone. Right. <laughs> so, but um, just letting you know that you can be an advocate. You know, you can be an advocate. Just because I post monkey pox, you think I got monkey pox? You exactly. Like monkey pox. Yes, you like, just bring in awareness. Right. And so, you know, I'm always Stuff looking. Stuff that other people are scared to say because yep. they think people going to think they have like, yep. wow. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm, I'm always looking for advocates, too. So, I, I need sorry, to be advocate, look at Judy. Sign, read that sign behind you. <laughs> oh. Okay. I see y'all representing AHF. Okay, AHF. <laughs> AIDS yeah. Healthcare Foundation. <laughs> <laughs> OMG, I am loving the vibe. I said it to say, big CEO slash founder of Outstanding Mature Girls. Can you tell me more about the OMG girl? Yes. So, uh, OMG, oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Outstanding Mature Girls organization. Uh, we've been around for 10 years now. And uh, we continue to um, mentor young ladies, uh, teach them leadership skills, life skills, value, uh, wellness, uh, just all of that mixed in, again, with education, I mean, with entertainment. And uh, as we do that with entertainment is education. So we create those particular platforms, um, hence the OMG conference, to be able to bring that awareness. Uh, we do meet consistently. Um, every Tuesday uh, where we either meet virtually or in person uh, with young ladies on various topics that uh, may be uh, just affecting them at the time or just various topics that uh, we feel that they should know about uh, to be able to help them. But um, it's been exciting um, to, you know, be in that position to be able to create an organization that is free uh, for young girls to be a part of. Because um, growing up, again, um, my parents could not afford to pay for me to be in a good uh, program. Right. And uh, again, I go back to my childhood and in creating OMG saying that, you know what, I want something that may look, you know, and soon be a billion dollar organization and it's free for girls to join. So we're gonna run and operate it as such. And, and do y'all have like, do y'all work in the other industries? Um, like, um, we work with other organizations. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we do work with other organizations, AIDS Healthcare Foundation being one. Um, we partner with whomever um, we need to partner with. I know uh, right now we are partnering with the Greater Baton Rouge Food Bank to be able to bring a food pantry. Shout out to y'all. Mm -hmm. All of <laughs> Yes. <laughs> <laughs> to be able to bring a food pantry um, in for uh, the community. And so, I mean, it's just, it's just been amazing to see how the young ladies who... Um, matriculated through the program also come back and be junior club leaders um, within our program so um, JCLs so we have young ladies who've been in the program since they were I guess what eighth or ninth graders and now they're in college they're 20 21 years old and they are, themselves are leaders and mentors to the younger girls and so that's what that's what I want so who qualifies to be an OMG girl do you have to be you you qualify oh, okay. <laughs> so so no so um you oh, don't I'm not a victim. <laughs> no. so no so you don't have to be a you know no you don't have to be a victim um of of any type of, of violence or anything um however everyone is welcome so ages girls ages 10 to 19 years old um, if you just want to improve your confidence, if you want to um, work on your yeah, self-worth, yeah, I, yeah, I and I leadership, and, and improve your leadership skills because, you know, I put you right out in the front to, <laughs> to be able to lead and just to get you out of that comfort zone. And so, um, you know, that's my, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's my whole thing to get you out of that, of that comfort zone. And so um, that's what we do with our girls where they are able to have my back let's right. say is wherever i may I fall short at yeah and so they're like okay well we got you i you know i can do this now miss sashka i can help out so um just being able to see that um you know is, is a really good thing 
So hypothetically speaking, what if I met someone and they told me that they was exposed to something, but they just don't know how, they scared to go check and see, and they don't know who to go to and talk to. What would you tell them? What would you want me to tell them? Um, so I would, you know, I would definitely offer to take them, um, especially if I have that, that time or, or whatnot, offer to, to take, like, I will go with you. And so um, that's another thing, you know, somebody just always looking for someone to be able to um, hold their hand through this because, you know, you never know what's on the other side. Um, it may be a good result. It may be, you know, something that they um, are going to have to, you know, get treated and, and work and live with for the rest of their lives. And so just letting them know that um, you got their back, um, that it is okay, and that they can live they can live a healthy life. Um, you know, it's, it's definitely um, a, a tough situation and um, just counseling. Um, you know, counseling is, is something that um, the black community um, shies away from. But I tell this to a lot of people, every successful person has a counselor or a therapist uh, to be able to help them, you know, get through because I mean, life is just hectic. And so for someone who's now, you know, afraid to, to go to the doctor or afraid to, um, you know, to check on themselves, just knowing your worth and knowing that you are of worth, no matter what the result may be. And, you know, talking to a therapist, talking to a counselor, it's okay, it doesn't make you a less than of a person. Um, you know, finding out your results doesn't make you less than a person. Nobody's going to look at you less than of a person because when you go into these particular um, places, I mean, they, they see this all the time. And so, um, you know, just not being afraid to be an advocate for your health, yes. um, you know, and, and to so, protect somebody else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, you know, just, just being there and loving on that person, I think would be, um, you know, a, a big thing. So happening and a lot of people's mm -hmm. head is just messed up because mm -hmm. of what the world thinks. Yep. Like some people may be born with it. They don't mm -hmm. mean I went out there and was nasty or HOE mm -hmm. or, you know, mm -hmm. So. Yeah, yeah, and so I, I know quite a few people that um, were born HIV positive. So, you know, nobody's going to look at you any different. You can still have a healthy life. Yes, you can still some don't even get, look like what they go through. With no, them. no, you can still be in a relationship. You can still have children who are um, negative. You know, so um, I say, you know, when if, if someone has a friend who's going through that, I would say for that person to educate themselves and then go and talk to your friend. And help yeah, and help educate them and, and just hold their hand through the process. This. <laughs> I know I went all the way this way and then come back, but I just... think I can really be a mentor with you with that. Like, mm -hmm. I really love doing it. Yeah, we're yeah, always looking I for mentors. I research on it and just help with it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. I love it. So, yeah, you can definitely uh, be a mentor with us, Judy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so what type of activities does the OMG girls partake in? Uh, we do tons of community service um, out in the community, wherever we're needed. Uh, we come and help. So whether it's with the constable's office, the mayor's office, um, whomever, uh, we are there babysit. to help. <laughs> well, we don't babysit, but, uh, <laughs> but you know, wherever we're needed, um, we come out there. We just came back um, from Panama City, Florida with the girls. So Ooh, just ex up <laughs> <laughs> so exposing them to, um, you know, those kind of things, because some girls have never left their neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. They never left their city, never left Louisiana. Uh, we've had young ladies, you know, Florida, that was their first time ever going to the beach. Probably didn't want to come back. And no, and didn't want to come back. And so, um, you know, we, we started off um, those retreats in a small condo. I mean, we packed. We, we were in there like sardines, but just wanting to give that experience to those young ladies yes. um, was everything. 
and then um, just kind of speak it into existence. I was like, y'all, we're going to get a beach house next year. And so we did. And y'all, we're going to get a bigger house next you year. And yes. And then we did. And so, um, you know, it's just only up from there and then speaking it and um, just making sure that everything is done, you know, with purpose and done with reason, done with love and, and, and for, you know, a good reason, a good cause. Yes. And so, you know, that was really fun um, being able to, you know, be away and have that bonding time and team building and building that sisterhood uh, was really good. And learning one another because, you know, you realize like, well, I know you from the OMG club, but man, I didn't know, you know, OMG, yeah, I didn't you know the sing. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, um, it was it was a really good experience. So we, you know, so we do, and we definitely need funding for that every year. So if anybody <laughs> wanna, you know, we we take cash app. So it's OMG Club LA. <laughs> so yes, OMG Club LA. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't, cause a lot of people don't have that at home. Like, so when they get to the OMG girls, mm -hmm. you know, they feel loved, they cared for. Yes, and, and just comfortable um, to be able to talk to us because we're not trying to take the place of a parent. We're just there to kind of help, like, okay, reiterate what your parents what may you have said. Which you probably a mama for a lot of them girls away from mm -hmm. their mama, like, even if you is a good parent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, um, and I appreciate that. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I mean, I, you know, just counseling them, counseling um, someone in the organization and counseling my own daughter um, is, is definitely, you know, a different scenario. However, I know that my daughter, I don't mind her having a mentor because she's yes. going to listen to that mentor first before she listens yes. to me. Because yes. <laughs> so, what mama say is wrong, but you're going to hear it again. Yes. Even if it ain't the same word. And so that's why I said we kind of reiterate you know, what they may have heard their parents say, and then they come, you know, Miss Sashka, and so, but they yes, may the go ahead and listen, yeah, listen <laughs> to me, you know, instead of their, you know, mom. So that's what we, you know, we do. And again, every child, I, I would say, need, even the mentors' children need yes, mentors. Yes, <laughs> yes. Everybody kind of goes through their own. Yes, exactly. So. So besides the sponsorship, what else do you need to help you keep building this organization for the girls? We need mentors who are a, really, really about helping the youth and helping young ladies to grow and to become better. And so the way that um, you can become a mentor is by going uh, to our website um, at www.outstandingmaturegirls.com dot org and uh, there is a, a volunteer form online that you can fill out to be a mentor this is where I got my information from mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so yes yeah, so please um, you know you know we don't want you coming in there you know because when you are a mentor um, you kind of have to um, set an example um, for the girls however yeah you can be relatable but you still have to show them that, hey, you know, I'm going to laugh, step, joke, you know, with you. To a certain extent. Yeah. It's a time is, favorite thing. Yeah, so this is how. And so um, in teaching our JCLs, that's what we are asking of them um, to do. You know, you got to put your foot down, and you know, sometimes. Crazy girls be in the group? Like mm -hmm. young teens? Yes, yeah, so we've had um, young moms uh, be a part of our, our group as well. So we, it's, it's, you know, it's never too late. Oh, okay, y'all don't discriminate. No. <laughs> <laughs> it was a okay. pleasure having you, Miss Sashka. Is there anything else you want to say? Um, I just want to say, um, send your money. <laughs> send your money. <laughs> uh, we have PayPal, Outstanding Mature Girls, uh, PayPal, and uh, our cash app, uh, dollar sign, OMG Club LA. <laughs> So we LA. need your support. We need your support to continue uh, the work that we do in the community. Um, I love your show. I thank love the, the title of it. And so thank you for checking on me and uh, seeing what it is that I do um, in the community. And I'm going to continue checking on you. Thank you. <laughs> oh, you're going to have to check, babe. I'm going to be a mentor. Okay. <laughs>
Or uh, do you have like any email, fax numbers? Um, so yeah, so you can email me um, at Sashika, S-A-S-H-I-K-A, at outstandingmaturegirls, with a Z, dot O-R-G. And how do we sign up for the voice class? Um, Sashika's voice. voice. Uh, you can go on to sashikasvoice.com. That's S-A-S-H-I-K-A-S-V-O-I-C-E dot C-O-M dot com. So I was saying that so, you know, Johnny can go ahead and type that in. <laughs> if y'all want to <laughs> like start, how they, y'all better start. Yes, um, I'm, I'm here to help and to be able to, to teach. Thank you, Judy. Oh, it was a pleasure having you. I love it. I yes. Start over. I'm excited. I'm so excited for you, and I know, uh, you know, where this will go. Um, I believe in you. Well, when you hear me keep saying stuff, you're going to know it's me. <laughs> yes. Because <laughs> my mouth will be open. You're going to open your mouth <laughs> when you speak. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's Worm Judy. Thank you guys for tuning in on the Check On Your People show where we bring you the people that is for the people. <laughs>